We live, baby. We live. We all the way live. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, man. You think we should wait a little bit? Let some let some people join in. Okay. Yeah, I see you might as well. Let them in. Let them in. Let them in. I see a couple people joined in. What's up, Darlin? I see you, Joe. Okay, Joe. What's happening, Joe? Joe. <laughs> man, we're doing some uh, some Market Monday updates just for the for the early folks. Let you guys know what we on some uh, some financial news. Some stocks, basically stocks, and a um, little bit of real estate, but th th that's gonna have to wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Boy, pulling this thing <laughs> already. Yeah. Oop, oop, oop. Tiana, what's up? Go Hawks! You see us? Twelve man, baby. We still got a chance. We still got a chance. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a far one, but you know we we got one. Yeah. All right, man. What you want to do? You want to get it going? Yeah. What's up? Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's do it. All right. So, um, what what I've been on lately is the uh, EYL University, Earn Your Leisure, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's a couple brothers, two in particular, Rashad and Troy. And then also Ian Dunlap, who you know about, he does he does their Market Monday updates. And every Monday they have episodes where they go over the market, what's happening in the market. Um, a lot of things. They cover politics as well. Um, just, you know, everything that has to do with market and finances. They're big on mm -hmm. financial education and literacy. Financial so, literacy. Yeah, exactly. So what I talked to you about, what, like a week ago, last week? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had an idea. Basically, every Monday we can do a highlight real basically of what they do we're going to talk about that they, they have like a two-hour episode mm -hmm. so everybody doesn't have time to watch that two-hour episode but i do <laughs> <laughs> right right so so i just uh just uh you know to let the people know man what got you into what got you interested in this when did you start because i know me and you you know we've been reading books getting getting you know trying to gain the knowledge what books yeah. have started that piqued your interest you know let us know about this square knowledge man let us know yeah 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 uh really yeah like he said just reading started reading books i remember a few years ago you put me on to rich dad poor dad yes sir ever since then when i first read it it was like uh you know it just planted that little seed and like a uh -huh. year went by and then i started reading a little more and more and i was like oh okay i'm starting to understand that a lot a lot of um success has to do with financial literacy and if you don't know much about financial literacy it's gonna be it's gonna be a harder path now that's impossible it's gonna be a harder path to you know, to financial freedom, which is my goal, which is right, which is your oh, goal, for you, I guess. Exactly. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Market Monday, Troy, Rashad, and Ian, they just give a wealth of knowledge. You feel me? And they're giving mm -hmm. it to for free. So, um, what our, what me and D Time's goal is, is shit, we're trying to help spread that knowledge even more. So, this is all their, all of their, um, all, this is all their information. You know, where we should actually add them in the. Um, I don't know if we add them in the comments or. Right. Yeah. Or um, I see we got a question. Can you define financial freedom? Financial freedom is when you have enough passive income to to cover your your monthly bills, like your mortgage, your car payment, your phone bills, all that stuff. If you. Great question. Great question. Yeah, yeah. So when you have enough passive income to cover those things, and you don't have to work then you're financially free. You have financial freedom at that point. So yeah, if you're debt free, you don't have any I mean obviously there's there's certain things of you know good debt and there's bad debt, right? So obviously you want to be debt free on the bad debt. Obviously your mortgage, you know, is something that, you know, is a debt, but it's a it's a controlled debt that, you know, that you're you're mon monitoring and all that good stuff. So it all depends yeah. on how you look at everything. But you know, you want to be debt free and like you said, you just want to be able to be able to provide passive income to, you know, to yourself and your family. Yeah, yeah. So you can go vacate for two months out the year, and you'll be good. Your bills and stuff will all be covered. So, sir, and it's basically it's residual income. You know what I'm saying? You want multiple streams of income. You want, you know, and you want to invest. You want to be able to, yeah, like you said, be able to do what you can do. Yeah, yeah. I see you, Eastside Smooth. Good looking, homie. Woo! Okay, Smooth. 
How you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah. Al, I see Al in here. What's good, big homie? Um, so, yeah, exactly. That's what we're going to go over. We're going to go over um, just, you know, some financial tips in the stock market as far as reading, reading the charts, um, companies, what companies are, are, you know, good companies to buy. They're going to be obvious ones. Um, and, um, yeah, just, you know, this is our first time doing it. So bear with us. Might be a little rocky, but we got some notes. My notes are a little scattered, but I got some stuff for you guys. And uh, like we said, this is all from – the guys at EYL and Market Monday. This is a Market Monday recap, basically. This is not basically, this is exactly what that is. This mm -hmm. is, it's a Market Monday recap. So the and guys- I, are, I guess the question for you is, why do, why do you feel like we need to provide this highlight reel, uh, provide this highlight reel instead of people going to the, you know, the two hour long? No, they definitely should. They should for sure. Okay. Everyone go check out EYL Market Mondays. And you can join EYL, too, and, and become an earner is what it's called. I actually joined, so I'm an earner, right. part of the university. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, you should definitely, everyone, if you have the time, go go check it out because it's yeah. a wealth of knowledge. And they're spoon-feeding. They're spoon-feeding yep. stuff, like, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, yeah, and so basically what we're doing here, man, is to recap it, to, you know, to pique your guys' interest because we know it is super long. It's, you know, two hours long. So we yeah. basically want to, you know, pique your guys' interest to join it, to follow, to, you know, to go check it out. You know, we want you guys to get that get that game, get that knowledge, get that square knowledge. You know what I'm saying? That's what this show's all about. You know, we're, we're calling ourselves square knowledge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, just to, you know, provide what we can, what we know. You know, obviously, we're going to learn right there with you. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have all the answers. And, you know, we're going to strategize together, brainstorm together, and kind of rock it. So, yeah, you know, yeah. ask your guys this question, throw your question, you know, in, in the comments. Let us know what you guys – let us know what you guys are – um, what stocks you guys are involved in. You know what I'm saying? You know, let us know what, what stocks you have, what crypto you guys have. If you have any or what your plans are for the next year, let us know, you know. Yep, yep, exactly. And so, um, yeah, let's get to it, man. Yep. Do your thing. All, all right, so let me see what I have to start with here. Um, okay, yeah, let's start with basics. So um, when you're investing, everyone knows when you look at if you have Robinhood or a trading chart, whatever you go on. TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade, Vanguard. You trade. trade. Yeah, when you look at the charts, whenever, whenever you pull up a, a, a ticker, you know, which is the symbol for the name of the company, like Apple, it's A-P-P-O. If you pull up that ticket, you pull up to the chart, and you'll see all the candlesticks, is what they call, going up and down the chart, right? right. And, um, so I think a good, a good starting point, if you want to invest, a lot of people, when they start investing, they just throw money at it, and they don't really know what they're throwing at, what they're throwing it at, when they're throwing it at, and why they're throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. But if you just learn the basics, like some of the basic knowledge for reading the chart is support and resistance, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to, you, a lot of people have heard you don't want to invest at the top, you know, you want to invest on a, on a pullback. You invest at the top, then your money goes down because the chart is always going to go up and down. A healthy, mm -hmm. a healthy chart. Always That's the only way a chart can go is up or down. Yep, yep, exactly. So, I wish I had, um, let me see. No, I don't. So, basically, whenever, if you look at a chart and you'll see it going, you'll see it making its way up and making its way down. Whenever it's making its way up and it stops, that is what you call resistance. And you'll see, if you'll be able to look back on a chart, you'll be able to see over time where it's hit resistance. So, whenever it gets up to those resistance levels, those are the levels you want to stay away from when, you, when you're putting your money in. It's called a buy-in when you're trying to buy in. Exactly. When you're trying to buy in, you want to buy in where support is. So then when that when that ticker, when that uh, candlestick comes down, right, and it finds support and it hits that and starts going up, those are your buy-in levels. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So you it gives you a greater chance of, of having, you know, positive um, – Positive earnings, basically. Yep, and and to, and to add on to that, um, if you guys you know join into the e EYN, um, you'll e EYN, you'll see EYL, you excuse me, EYL, you'll see uh, them talk about it. They'll even they'll give you a full number to to find support to help you. So definitely tap into them. Um, they'll definitely give you a little bit more uh, specifics on you know when to when to join and when not to join, or what's a good stock, what's a bad stock. We'll kind of give you that information too. But definitely look into you know into the uh, to the uh, market mondays yeah yeah for sure so
So yeah, besides, so also support and resistance comes uh, the 200 day moving average and 50 day moving average. Now these are the most popular moving averages. People use other, you can use any day, but 20 day moving average, 60 day moving average, but the 50 and 200 are the most, excuse me, common ones. And when you set those up on a chart, it'll make a line of exactly what it what the 50 day moving average is, which is the 50 day where that price has been moving along for 50 days. Yep. And, that, and so these lines also act as support and resistance. So if you're looking at a looking at a chart and you see the price is sitting right on top of a 50 day moving average, then you know that support is right below you. You know you have good support here. You know that the chances are if you buy in right here with that 50 day moving average underneath you, then it's gonna it's gonna be harder for that price to fall through that support. Yep. It's a high percentage for it to go up and rather than down. Exactly. It's not exactly. it's not always true, but no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's the, you you can't predict you can't predict the market. So. Yep. And the so and and then the same thing with resistance. If you if it's if you see the the price getting right to the right to going up to the top and it hitting that fifty day moving average or two hundred day moving average, it's gonna it's gonna be harder for it to pass pass that threshold. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't want to. Most of the time, you don't want to. You don't want to. Uh, and you don't want to invest there unless you're doing a long time long term hold. Your your buy ins don't really matter, in which these guys at EYL and I advise to do long term holds regardless, but your buy-in is still is still key. If you can have a good buy-in, why not? Don't just, you know, don't just throw money in there just because. And don't be following trends either. Um, some of these tra trends are not <laughs> are not real. So, you know, just because everyone wants to jump in or you see other people jump in doesn't mean it's a good time for you to jump in. So, yeah, be, yeah. Be ready yeah. with that. And that's big, too. Once it's in the news, it already happened. Yep. The, so the, the sport's already gone. about trends, right? Right. Yeah, it's like like once it's in the news and everybody's on it, it's too late. You already missed it. Mm -hmm. And I've been a victim. I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> plenty. Bro, it's like, oh, it's, it's up. It's going up. I need to get in. I need to get in. So and, and everyone get that, in everyone that just... bought in on Dogecoin. Yep. It was yeah. too late. Too, too late. late. You just watch your money trickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So... Let me just let's get to today's or not today's episode. Yesterday's episode. Let me see here. Appreciate appreciate y'all tapping in, man. Appreciate y'all tapping in. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, yep. Okay, so yesterday they started with let's see here. One, two three i started with the so vti vti is the vanguard total stock market index and indexes are the vanguard total stock market index is basically the top companies it's like the s p 500 for those who know what the s p 500 is it's uh these indexes invest in all the top so for the s p 500 example that these indexes invest in all the top 500 companies all the top 500 market cap companies, in, you know, in our economy. So if you buy one share of v, VTI or or VOO, which is the S and P 500, you get a share of all these big companies. So you're investing in the market as a whole, and not just one company. Real quick, just so, just you know, just so I can I can understand, is uh, S P and 500? Are they? I know there's different indexes or uh, indexes. Is it? certain categories like technology energy and all that stuff or is this one just the top five top 25 just just top five period okay 500, or top yeah. 500 yeah yeah if you want to do if you want the uh the tech sector it's the nasdaq and their ticker is qqq and that's that's one of my one of my favorite i'm in on that yeah and, that, and that's actually one of the eyl's favorite too is QQQ. yeah yeah they talked yeah. about that yeah so yeah that's if you invest in that you invest in the tech sector so you get all the tech companies, and we all know technology. My guy, the boundary. Sorry, what's up, the boundary? Bound see you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you invest with QQQ, you you get all the tech companies. You know, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook. You know, all all, all the companies that Microsoft. are involved in tech. Yep, Square. Square, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure is in QQQ. Um, 
So yeah, VTI, VOO, they both had, VTI had 27.9% returns this year, and VOO had 28.9% returns this year. Followed by Apple, who had 39.5% this year. So these are all, this is why it's so, it's so important to invest in, in, in the big dogs. You know, a lot of people want to want to get in. I see you, Corinne. Uh, yeah. a, lot, a lot of people want to want to get in on like with the cheap stocks to try and hit big, you know, the little $10, $20 stocks and, and hope that those ride up to 100, 150. Mm -hmm. But if you just go with what works, you're going, you're going to have, you're going to win. You're going to have earnings, you know, Apple had, just this year, just just this year, they've they've their market cap has grown by like a trillion dollars. You know, mm. yeah, okay, a trillion. And this is like I'm saying, this is all info from um from EYL Market Monday. So we gotta yep. give those guys their credit. This is just sure. uh, this is a highlight reel for anyone who's just coming in. We're giving you info from the Market Monday with Ian Dunlap, Troy, and Rashad from EYL University. So um. Index investing is one of the is one of like the safest, in my opinion, ways to invest because you're not investing just on one company. One company can can you know bust, and then you're, you're, you know your shit out of luck. But when you invest in an index as a whole, the index moves and controls. If one company in that index is doing good, that index is going to put more shares, put more volume um, into that index. So now you'll be more heavily involved in that in that stock. And if it starts to do bad, it's going to push them out of it. Mm -hmm. and and how and how these indexes go especially like the S&P 500 and VTI it's the total stock market so how the economy goes is how your earnings are going to go VTI over the last 10 year period has a return of like 16% you know so you're beating inflation and your money's working for you I'm working for you exactly you know? so, and, and that and that's a part of, of getting to that financial freedom having that passive income mm hmm Basically, you want to have, you know, you want you to have your money working for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, so exactly. What? Exactly, so, yeah. So, like I said, VTI, VOO, Apple, great investments. Buy, hold them long-term. And Ian Dunlap, his, uh, his motto is two tech, two index, no stress. So, invest in two tech companies. So, Apple, his Microsoft, Adobe. Apple, Microsoft are his, are his are his two favorite. Mm -hmm. um, Adobe, they also mentioned in the episode. Yeah, yep. um, and then VTI and VOO, those are like his top four. I like QQQ as well. That's the tech sector. So yes, tech sector. Yeah, and yeah, if you you know Washington, you know we all about that tech. So yeah, and if you get in VTI VOO and you don't get in the Nasdaq, don't I mean you'll still have Microsoft, you'll still have Apple, you'll still have the top tech companies. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll, you'll you'll still be solid, but yeah, two tech in Dunlap, two tech, two index, no stress. You'll be good. It's it's a it's a winning play. Winning play, I like that. Yep. Okay, what else I got here? Um, so um, we we know also that we we've, we've been on a the market has been on a tear, right? Like we've never seen before. It's been on, and a lot of people are predicting like pullbacks and crashes or whatever. So the whole um, economy, to be honest with you, with the, you know with everything going on, it's been it's been crazy. But yeah, the crazy thing is, it's just to add in, it's everything's been on a on a high. You know, what I'm saying the stocks has been going up, real estate has been going up. You know, the, so it's just it's a weird it's a weird uh, time right now to where you know what's going on in the world and then what you know you know like you said everything's doing. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when Corona happened, we were supposed that was supposed to be because a healthy economy has pullbacks. Yep. Know? And when Corona happened, we did have a pullback. But since the government, excuse me, got involved and you know stimulated the economy, it didn't allow for a, a real pullback to happen. So right. that that wasn't you know that really wasn't a recession. Mm -hmm. So so a couple of things to be on the lookout for that would be. Uh, 13 of the top 50 billionaire companies, basically 13 of the top 50 billionaire CEOs selling off 10% or more of their portfolio. That is like a, you know, a red flag to be a aware. Red flag, yep. That's so a red something's flag. about to happen. Yeah, yeah. That a correction could be, you know, 
coming soon, you know. And some of these guys have already sold off. Um, Elon sold, I think Bezos, they've sold some. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, you just got to be aware. Stay tuned to it. Stay on EYL Market Mondays. This is a Market Monday recap. <laughs> yeah. Highlight reel. Yeah. Be the ESPN to the EYL. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So stay, stay tuned up tuned in with those guys then you know it'll be pretty good mm -hmm. um also what they've talked about is um what it's called semi semiconductors the chips okay so uh, I, I, yeah i was listening to that but i didn't really understand what they were talking about well semiconductors are they go in cars they go you know how it's so hard okay to yeah, yeah yeah yep okay the you know the playstations yeah, yeah 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 playstations uh xbox is why they're sold out everywhere. You can't get them. Like, they've been out for two years, but we can't get them. You know? right. But I remember being able to get a, <laughs> a new system as soon as Christmas came around. Right, right. <laughs> but there's a chip shortage. <clears throat> so naturally, you would think if there's a chip shortage, okay, these chip companies are would be somebody to, to invest in because they're going to they're gonna have a lot of value, a lot of worth. Mm -hmm. um, so find demand. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, SMH is one. Um, TSM is it? Dang, I can't remember. I think yeah, TSN. SMH. SMH. I'm sorry. SMH is the um, is the index for for semiconductors. So like yeah. I said, if you don't want to bet on one company, go with the SMH index. Index. Yep. Because you're gonna get them all. You know. Go with that, and you'll be good. SMH Taiwan semi semiconductors. That's TSM. Um, I think is, let me pull up my computer real quick. AMD and NVIDIA, NVIDIA, I think they're chip companies as well. Let me see. And those ones are, are, are big right now. Um, yeah, so let me see. Oh yeah. Just the, what's up? I said, what are some tip? what are some just, um, Instead of an index, if someone wants to just go into just some stocks or just some safe stocks, what are some safe stocks, just solo stocks that we can that we can we can dive into, or Apple. I guess we do research too before you, you know do all your research. We are not experts. Yeah. EYL is not experts. Please do all your research. But you know we just, we're just here to, you know to kind of bounce off inf information to each other. You know, yeah. saying you, you got financial that, advisors. You know, so yeah, so do your research. But yeah, go ahead. What were those stocks? Uh, Apple, Microsoft, um, who else we got here? Visa. He actually has a buy-in for Visa at 184. This is Ian Dunlap's numbers. 184 is a number to get in good with. Um, so that, so that's so. Just to go back to where we started, that's a, so 184 is is what he's claiming to be support level. Uh, let me go and look at it. Let me see. He's. He's saying it's a good buy-in price. Okay. Right. So, and he, he's a lot more detailed than just a 50 day, 200 day moving average. Right. So he's, he obviously sees something on his charts that we don't. Okay. That possibly we don't. I, I mean, I'm not sure. Let me see what I say. 184. It looks like we got a question in the comments. How can I purchase Apple stock? Sorry if I already answered. If you guys already answered that, so I get yeah. So what pl no, what platforms uh, or how can you get Apple stock? Uh, Robinhood is is a good one to start off on for you know for beginners. It makes it real simple. Download Robinhood, um, and it, it's real simple. It's easy as you know setting up an Instagram. All, all of these brokers just are. Um, I have Robinhood, but I also have uh, Fidelity. Darius, you got what? I have a TD Ameritrade and Robinhood. TD Ameritrade and Robinhood. So any of these brokerages, TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, Fidelity. There's E-Trade uh, even. E-Trade. Um, th those are all all good brokerages where you can you can sign up and um, you can you can purchase stocks. Binance is Binance is that's a crypto, right? I'm not mistaken. Explain yourself. <laughs> we don't know what that is. We haven't. That, so if that might be a good one too. We see, we're seeing it in the comments. Um, Binance.us. So let me yeah. Let me that up too. 
Yeah, no, Binance is a crypto. Binance, is, Binance is, is pretty popular. The guys on at, at EYL talk about it. Talk about it a lot. I'm not, I've, I've barely got my toes wet with crypto. So um, I'm only messing with with the, um, with the big dogs right now. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is crypto. So, um, Wait, crypto, but obviously crypto is a new game. So crypto and NFTs is something that, you know, you want to try to, do research too as well and we'll do the same you know what i'm saying we all can do it together so definitely yeah. you know look into crypto crypto is just kind of the new wave but you know again you don't want to jump on the bandwagon you want to you want to do your research make sure you're you're jumping into something right so obviously ethereum uh bitcoin bitcoin there's there's a few of them out there um mm -hmm. binance i've heard a lot about binance though those the, the, the guys at eyl rashad troy and ian they um they talk highly about Binance, so dig dig into that for sure. I don't like I said I don't know as much about crypto as I do with um, some of these stocks. To be honest with you, I don't think anyone knows anything much about crypto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crypto is just its own world, bro. I swear. <laughs> to be honest yeah. With you. yeah. So um, yeah, Binance. I've heard about Binance. It's definitely something to look into for sure. AMD though, it is. AMD is a, 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 a advanced micro devices. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, they they're big in semiconductors and stuff too. So that's a good company to invest in. And um, one thing too, also I want to touch back. How I was saying like a lot of people want to get on like twenty dollar, thirty dollar, forty dollar stocks, and I'm not I'm not mad at that at all. Like I, I would love to get on those stocks too, and ride them out until one hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Um, but getting on with these companies that are already solidified is big. Like even like AMD, I see it's $135 per stock. That's okay. And, and that's good because you have something. If you buy one, one stock of this, you have something that as of today's price is worth $135. That, ha that, has, that has value there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Compared to something that's only $20 and you're hoping just to hit big. You have a more of a chance of, of getting something that's uh, um, a solidified company like this at $135, that has way more of a chance of, of, of going up to 200, 300 than some of these other companies that are, are, are still trying to, to catch a wave, you know? Cause I think, cause yeah, cause the, the ones with the low, the low value, they're, they're volatile. They can go up, they can go down super yeah. fast. Like they can yeah. be, you know, in the, in the snap of a finger and that's, yeah. I mean, not necessarily, you know, a $20 stock, but most of them, when you get lower than that, they, they consider them pennies, you know, penny stocks. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's, then that's where you're getting into the day trading and all that stuff. And that's where you got to be a hawk on, on, the, uh, on the market, you know, yeah. watching it, you know, every second, every minute. This way, you know, with the, what he's talking about with these, you know, with these uh, firms and companies and stocks that are already established, already been around for a while, like Apple, like Microsoft, they're not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they're going to go up and down because that's what the stock market does. Mm -hmm. But they already have a base to where they can't, you know, necessarily they can't bankrupt themselves. You know what I'm saying? Unless they, unless that's their plan to bankrupt themselves, right? Yeah. But, you know, Apple, but, Apple ain't doing that. Microsoft yeah. ain't doing that. So those, that's why these are safe bets because, you know, they're they're not going anywhere. They're going to stay stay around for, you know, for however long, right? Yeah. And so the, all the only thing that can do they can do is continue to make more money, right? So. Exactly. And to touch back on Apple again, I forgot I kind of went over this on my notes, but like we said, Apple made a trillion dollars this year, right? Like th their returns for the year are almost forty percent. So I mean, that's if you put in a hundred dollars last year and just let it sit, you'd have made forty bucks for doing nothing. Mm -hmm. For doing nothing, that's just off a hundred dollars. But they made a trillion dollars this year. Excuse me, and they still have a lot of big projects on the way. This is a this is all like I said information from from uh, the guys on Market Monday. But they have VR glasses. We know uh, with Facebook, which is now what's Facebook called again? I Meta. Meta. You know how everything's going into that metaverse. So yes. Apple has VR glasses that they're they haven't debuted yet. They're getting into healthcare. They also have a e, an electric vehicle that they're supposed to be working on. And they also have a crypto project because crypto is obviously getting big. I mean, it did renamed Staples Center to the crypto. So 
Like Apple still has a lot of room to grow. So yeah, so yeah, they still haven't made any boom. They haven't even made any 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 booms yet. So they yeah, a lot of stuff is about a to lot. Uh, yeah, they still got a lot left to do. So yes, the um, Apple it, it costs a lot, but it, it's worth that. And that money is still is yours. It's still yours. So you don't the, the more money you just you just sit around in a bank or in your mattress or something it, it's going to lose its value when you put it in these stocks and let it sit there you know it'll work for you all right so moving on i'm going with apple all day get me excited yeah um so another thing that's stressed is that when you invest in companies you want to invest in companies that have competitive advantage and uh, one company they use as an example that doesn't have a competitive advantage is Peloton. Peloton are the bikes mm -hmm. that came out when the pandemic first hit. And, and they were booming. Like, they were killing, too. After, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody was on it because, you know, everyone had time. Every time everyone was not working or, you know, was working from home. So they had tons of time at home. But now that, you know, we're, we're back on, you know, we're back kind of moving, moving again. They don't have any. Go ahead. I mean, you can finish it up, but they don't have any backbone, I guess you could say. Yeah, they just don't really have that competitive competitive advantage because now the gyms are open back up. Exactly, like people aren't aren't forced to stay home and, and and ride those bikes anymore. So, their their stock has taken a hit because of that. So, companies that have um, competitive advantages are, you know, th those are the companies you wanna you wanna hop in on. Um, okay, so all this had kind of has something to do with crypto, I guess. Is NFTs? NFTs are are big right now you know it's in the news a lot a lot going on with nfts and um so a lot of nfts right now are, are going around and not all of them are actually going to be worth not a lot of them are actually going to be worth you know um are not gonna be worth anything in, in the in the coming years because from my understanding with these nfts is the creator the creator of the NFT, in order for this NFT to have to be worth something, the creator has to have some social equity. Mm -hmm. Has to be basically a, a famous or popular person. If I go and make an NFT right now, there I don't I don't have like a big following or anything that that people are going to want to hold on to my to my painting or my drawing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if Drake comes out with a dope ass, it doesn't even have to be dope. It's Drake. Uh, ow. Yeah, exactly. If he if he creates if he if he creates that owl, you know, and, and puts it out as an NFT, now that one of that one of a kind NFT, because that's what NFTs are, are non fungible tokens, there it, it, it's one of one. Mm -hmm. So, so now since that was owned by Drake, Drake since Drake put that, it's like owning a Drake painting basically. Mm -hmm. And he'll now get, every and, he'll get and, commission and, off of it every time someone resells it. It's almost like it's almost like a sneaker game. But it's yeah. digital, you know what I'm saying? To where you know you get the Jordans and you resell, 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 and they get it more expensive and more expensive. It's the same thing with the EFT, with the NFT. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a artist or a creator can create something as long as they have that, you know, that influence behind them. They yeah. can they can sell it for you know however much they want, and it be in the NFT space. And then the people that bought it or whatever, they can resell it, hold on to it for a time being, and resell it. And even that creator or artist still gets commission of five percent, ten percent, depending on how they they operate off that every time it resells. Yeah. So it's just a whole other game. Um, I think that has to do with the smart contracts. Yeah. I don't know for sure. I haven't looked up smart contracts, but I think that's what the smart contract is. And again, I'm just I'm going off of what you know. I'm I'm you know what I've learned, and it's it's still over my head. So. Yeah. Like, I, I read, well, anybody I, knows anything? <laughs> you for real. Let us know. Like I heard, I heard uh, in I don't know if it was in in the metaverse or what but i heard snoop dogg got a got a crib in the metaverse because you know it's a whole world right and then someone bought a four hundred fifty thousand dollar digital crib next to snoop dogg 450 i swear i swear i heard this right yeah four hundred fifty thousand dollar crib next to snoop but now what he can do though because now mind you you're like wait that's a that's a mount for a real house you know what i'm saying about that digitally but now what he can do though now is since he's by Snoop Dogg, obviously everyone loves Snoop Dogg. So when people come visit, he can, you know, people are going to, you know, basically go to his house and be like, hey, I want to put ad space on your house, you know, flyers, mm -hmm. banners, whatever it is in the house digitally 
to where because obviously people are going to want to go sit, sightsee right, and go go. see yeah. Snoop Dogg's house. So it's just stuff like that, which is again, this is beyond my. Well, who sold? My question is, who sold it to him for four hundred fifty thousand dollars? I think the metaverse. Cause it's meta. It's it's because it's, it's their world to where you got to buy. It's almost like you know, land, you know, real estate, right? Yeah, it's their world. So you know, you're basically buying land. You know, what I'm saying you're buying yeah. digital land, digital property, to, you know, what I'm saying to kind of just you know live almost like the Sims or whatever you want to call it, but or online game gaming, and it's just ad space, right? Yeah, ad exactly. Space, yeah. Someone said that, and, and it's yeah. basically ad space, right? That's, that's the ad space. We're like, even like, and then what's crazy is like, so that person's house, like, if someone like. He could throw a party and have, you know invite people to come over. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's nuts, man. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. So NFTs is basically for right now. It's basically for artists and creators. Yeah. Uh, for, so be careful know. what you buy. Don't just buy anything because yeah. it looks. You can't like just buy. Yeah, you can't worse. just buy. Exactly. It exactly. doesn't mean unless it's somebody who has social equity, then it has potential to be worth something later on. Mm -hmm. But. And that doesn't say like anybody else's is, isn't valuable. It's probably valuable, but it's just gonna be a longer road to make you know a and, profit on it. Yeah, and since it's so brand new, you just gotta be careful with that right now because there's so many of them. Right, just like how when crypto first came out, how you know there was Bitcoin, yeah. there was Ethereum, and then there was Doge, and there was this, and there was this, and some of them are just they're waterways, right? They're paperweights where they fell right right away, right? So it's gonna be the same thing for NFTs. You know, what I'm saying some are gonna be, you know hot ones some are going to be cold ones some are going to be dead you know duds to where like you're like oh okay i'm in this one and all of a sudden it's gonna be like oh yeah no this isn't this isn't real so so you just got to you know be careful do your research you know obviously i'm still doing mine um mm -hmm. it's just you just got to know that you know the world is changing the world you know we are going to a different a different kind of you know meeting meeting or media to where you know you just want to make sure you're on top of it you know what i'm saying you want to be at least put a big toe in it you know what i'm saying just be, be a part of it you know yeah Oh, I got the we got the big dogs in here. Okay, big bro. Okay, Jarvis. Jar Jarvis Jarv. I see him. Witness. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! So yeah, study it and study them things. NFTs, crypto, study all that stuff. Um, okay, we got another. We got another question in the comments. If you don't mind me asking, what are some cryptos you guys would look at if you just started? It's really the, 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 the right now. I would do. The, the the main ones the top the top right the top five yeah. the top three and that's obviously bitcoin ethereum even though they're super high it's okay to you know throw 100 bucks in 50 bucks in and just let that build you know yeah um, and you, obviously you can you know throw in, throw in some other ones if you know but i i mean to be honest with you i'm still new to the crypto game too so i'm trying to learn it myself but for me i think i'm gonna go start with you know crypto i mean excuse me uh bitcoin ethereum just because I know those two are legit. I because I was one of those people that jumped into Dogecoin super late. Um, yeah. Actually, you know, we actually kind of <laughs> got in pretty early. No, nah, we got on. Yeah, we got on pretty good. We, we got in pretty early, but it just obviously it was it was a trend, right? So it kind of it dropped. It, it went up because everybody was on it, and then it kind of it fell. So I'm trying to find this crypto um, website that I was on too. Dang, what was it called? So basically, you want to mess with the top ten. Damn, what is this name of this site? Do you want to mess with the top 10 coins? Um, Bitcoin and um, Ethereum are the top two. So, man, what is this site? It literally will tell you the top 10 of them. And then why he's looking at that? Oh, it's, coin, it's coin, coinmarketcap.com. Go to coinmarketcap.com. And it has the the top. Look at this here. One, two. I, I mean, sure, it goes even deeper than 10. 20, I'm at now. 30, 40. But I, I wouldn't mess with all those ones down at 30, 40. Mess, stay, stay in the top 10. Do your research. Stay in the top 10. And also learn how to, how to read the charts. Mm -hmm. Because how you read the charts in uh, stocks, is, is it's going to be the same for crypto as well. You want to... You want to get in at support, and do not get in at resistance. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got we got we got we got the squad. You know the squadron in um in the comments saying you can go to crypto.com as well to get the top ten as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crypto.com, and make sure you don't want to just buy your crypto on any on any websites because there are certain websites if they're not following regulations and you have crypto on that site, you you can you can lose your crypto because that website yeah. can be shut down. Exactly. So. 
So you want to get in on coin. There's also ways to um, to transfer. If you're already in on one of these websites, you can transfer your your uh, your coins from. Wow, we're, we're actually getting into crypto here. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually transfer your coins um, to like a safer safer website or a safer. There's uh, something that's called a nano ledger. It's like a portable USB drive. You can put your coins on that, but you want to be super careful with that because if you lose that, you lose your coins. Yeah. But I've heard stories. Well, I've heard stories from the guys at Market Monday um, and Ian Dunlap that there there are people who have made hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars on Bitcoin or any crypto. But since the website that they were on wasn't following regulations, that website gets shut down. They lost all their money. They lost all their all coins it. and they can't get that back. All of it. Yeah. So yeah. coinmarketcap.com. You you can find all the top um all the top cryptos there. Do your research though. And um just yeah, do your research, be smart. Crypto is a lot more volatile, it moves real quick. At least Bitcoin I know for sure does and Ethereum. Like you can have twenty, thirty percent swings like like it's nothing. It's normal. It's normal for um yeah, I know, Percy. I, I think I think I forgot to tell you about that, bro, because you told me you had your uh <laughs> your uh, coins on a website. I'm like, oh, you guys to get those off of there, I got <laughs> <laughs> real quick. But uh, for for everyone that just joined, man, um, we're uh, it's kind of the the recap from the Market Mondays from EYL. Yeah. If you guys haven't tapped into them, man, there's some brothers that are you know that that are basically giving away knowledge, man, giving away knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we're just here to kind of just you know throw the highlights, man. We're kind of ESP into them, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, this is our first day doing it, you know what I'm saying? So. Obviously, we'll get polished up, up here, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, we just want to, you know, kind of just spread the knowledge, you know, square knowledge. That's what we're calling ourselves right now, square knowledge. And um, we just want to kind of just provide that information. You know, we're still trying to learn ourselves, and we want to we want y'all to uh, learn it as well with us. So if you guys have any more questions, shoot them in there. Um, we'll try to answer them the best we can. Yeah. But, you know, also, let us know what, uh, what stocks you guys are in, um, what stocks you guys have, what stocks you guys are thinking about. Let us know. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Um, all right, let's move on now to what I got here. Man, we might have to break this up. I got more notes than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> we went over that. Okay, yeah, let's just finish out yesterday's yeah. episode. So, um, Robinhood. Robinhood is down 44% this month. So, that's that's a big drop. I wasn't in Robinhood. I'm thankful if any of you were in Robinhood. I'm sorry, but Stay strong. Ian I'm not Dunlap. in Robin Hood, but I use Robin Hood. Is that a... Yeah, yeah, no, you're fine. And that's, that's what I was just going to get to. Ian, Ian Dunlap, he actually likes Robin Hood. He, yep. thinks, it's a, he thinks it's a great business and it has a good CEO, so... Yep. He, like not... CEO. That's, a, that's another thing. They love the CEO, actually. I think they know him personally, so... Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, it's a blood bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's looking ugly over there. So from my understanding, what happened with them is um, they did their IPO and a lot of people jumped in. So that the guys at Market Monday, their advice is to wait at least 90 days after the IPO. Let it settle. Let, it, let the IPO come out. Let it do its thing. Let it settle before you jump in. If you do pre-IPO, they said that, that's okay. Um, but I guess what hurt them is there's been lower retail trading and crypto trading over the past, I'm guessing, month since this happened this month. So, um, let's get airline shares on Robinhood. Yeah, yeah, Robin, your 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 coins and your shares on Robinhood are good. Yeah, because the platform is a, is a platform. We're talking about the yeah. the actual because you know Robinhood's public, so they they have a stock. We're too talking about that, yeah. And that so the stock went down, but the platform's fine. You know what I'm saying? So all your stocks in in Robinhood have nothing to do with the the actual stock of Robinhood. Yeah. So two different things. Two different things. Yeah. Um. I thought I put down. I'm pretty sure. Wait, ninety days. I'm pretty sure he said. Um. Let me go to the charts. And I think uh, that, I think that's what IPO, IPO is, right? They just went public. Yeah, IPO's initial public offering. Yeah. So they went they went public and they, you know, with all with all the issues that they had at the, the beginning with, you know, with the trying to regulate our stocks and well, yeah. all that happened and then they try to go then they try to go public or they went public, not tried, they went public and then 
everyone jumped into it, you know, the, you know, all the retail stocks and all that stuff, and it kind of it, it fluctuated the the buying. Yeah, it fizzled off. Yeah. So, but now um, I think it's at eighteen. Let me try and find it real quick. Why my cap locks on? My computer's acting slow. Um, yeah, I think it's at eight. Apple product. <laughs> You are an Apple product right now, player. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure it's at 18 right now. And Ian Dunlap saying a good buy-in. Um, number would be $14. So, um, for what is that for again? Say that again. Sorry. My for Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Okay. For Robin Hood. Because now it's settling, you know? Mm-hmm. No, nah, we're not really. It's at 18 right now? Yeah. Let me see. What? Their ticker is Hood? Stop it. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, that's good. You see what it entertains us? We get we get real excited real quick. <laughs> yeah, they're they're at uh, they're at nineteen right now. Um, and Ian Dunlap said a good buy-in point for them would be fourteen dollars. So if you're in the Robin Hood, you you know, and and that and that's a cheaper one. It's a good company. Ian Dunlap he backs it up. So I would say go for it if you guys want to go for it. It's a little cheaper, so. Go ahead, get your feet wet. Fourteen dollars. Wait for that. Wait for that buy-in number. That is, it's pretty close. So that's a good one. Uh, no, nah, we're not really getting into specifics on crypto, P. But um, just yet. Yeah, that'll that'll be something. We'll definitely be digging into that a little more, a little more. Um, if the guys on Market Monday give it to us, we are gonna give it to y'all because that's what we're doing here. This is all Market Monday. Market Monday uh, information back with a little bit of me and Darius's information as well. Our knowledge, we you know, we've done a little research and reading up on this stuff as well. But um, we're giving you guys a highlight reel from the Market Monday show. So, okay, let's move on here from Robin Hood. Um, so, few what they jumped into after that was basically that few stocks drive the market higher. So it's it's going to be those the, those those big companies you talk about: Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google. These are companies that are. Oh, Google! Yes, we haven't mentioned Google. Google's a good one too. Yeah, Google's a good one. Yes, they they're high price, but it hold it, they have value. So you're not wasting your money or losing your money when you when you're investing in these companies. You're teaming up with the with the big dogs that drive the economy for the next decade. Every also in my notes I have what they said, every decade there's gonna be four to six companies that that push the economy. So when you well just tell me when and what y'all buy into. Yeah, for sure. That's what we're gonna do, P for real, because that's what they're doing on Market Monday. And we know everyone doesn't have the time to watch Market Monday. I'm gonna watch it. Darius is gonna watch it and we're gonna tell you guys what's up. So um yeah, so but like I said, those companies are um, th those are the companies that, that are going to drive the economy. So so it's not that hard. You don't have to get cute with it. Invest in the companies that are pushing the economy, and you're going to have good returns. Square is also another one. I've recently invested in Square. Square is another one that Ian Dunlap is huge behind. CEO is Jack Dorsey, who used to be Twitter CEO, but now he's with. He, he stepped down and he's solely doing square, which actually they changed their name to block. So, mm -hmm. um, but, it, but that, that one he's huge on. And right now it's on a major pullback. And what I just remembered, they also have a 10, 20, 30 rule. So Ooh, this was, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna explain it. This was, I think it was Troy who mentioned this. Oh no, no, it was Rashad. I think it was Rashad. One of the guys on Mark and Monday. I think it was Rashad. <laughs> but so the 10, 20, 30 rule is if it's stock is 10% off of its high, that's a decent buying point. If it's 20% off of its high, it's a, excuse me, it's a good buying point. If it's 30% off of its high, it's a great buying point. Mm -hmm. And right now, Square is at like, it's over 30% off of its high. So, signaling a great buying point right now and it's it's under the 50 day and a 200 day moving average both pointing down so it could drop some more um it's at 170 ian dunlap said he loves it at 170 and he's also said he could see it possibly getting lower getting lower yeah, i think he said i think he said we could go to 160 but he was like 
he's like, I like it at 170, but if it goes to 160, I like it even better. So yeah, yeah, I, I think he even said even lower, like yeah. one. Where oh, I see one back here, 150, and then there's another res support level down here at like 129. I see. So he's saying it could get that low, but he likes it still at 170. If it gets to 120, 30, 40, 50, he's gonna load the boat. And it's a five-year hold. He's saying hold it for five years. Mm -hmm. These are flips. You don't got to do these quick flips to make money. The more you trade, the more you lose. Yep. So hold these stocks, and you'll be good. Squ Square is a good one. Airbnb, they don't like get out of it. They're, they say there's not. Uh, they don't really have a competitive advantage. Um, Lucid and Fortnet are two companies I don't know much about. Um, like I Fortnite, said, not the Fortnite's not the game either. It's a, it's a totally different company. Yeah, Fortnet. So it's a cybersecurity company. Um, Lucid, I don't know much about, but Lucid, he has a buy-in at twenty-two dollars and seventy-six cents. Um, yeah. So digging on those. Like I said, we appreciate you guys bearing with us. We're, this is a little rocky for the first go around, but. Mm -hmm. We'll get, there. we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to do some more research ourselves, too, to maybe have a little more information on these companies. But um, moving on, inflation. That's another key to why also you want to invest, right? We we start off the show saying we want to invest because we want passive income, right? Um, and for financial freedom. But inflation, inflation is, is so real, it, 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 which I never really understand really until like this past year. I always just wanted to save money, save money, save money. But what I didn't realize that as I was saving money and inflation was going up, I was just losing the money that I was, I was saving. That was just sitting, not doing anything. And so, like I said, with value change, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the inflation, the price, the, the, um, we, we're losing our, um, our buying power as the dollar, as the dollar rises, you know. The dollar is actually losing its value. It's going mm -hmm. down. But the price, price so the price. Oh, mighty lower. dollar. Yeah, so ain't a dollar no more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so that's why it's so huge to invest. Like I said, um, Apple just this year was thirty. Where's that? Apple just this year thirty nine percent. VTI twenty seven percent. BOO twenty eight percent. On average, inflation is like three to five percent or something like that. So if you just have money sitting, you're losing three to five percent of that money every year. But when you're investing, if you have, if you if your investments are bringing you in, just say even only ten percent. That's how you beat inflation. Right. You feel me? Yeah. And then I think even even a saving account is what one percent. Yeah. Get out of that. You don't want to bank saving accounts. That they're no good. You're gonna. You lose. want bare minimum. You want bare minimum in your saving account, right? Yeah. You want yeah. bare minimum, and then everything else you want to You know, you want to invest. Now, yeah. obviously, it doesn't have to be the stock market, but you know, that's one place you can go and then obviously there's you know real estate, real estate and all that good stuff so business you know, business all that so yeah you know, so. But, you know, it's just yeah it's just the, the way of the world you know inflation is real um you know obviously the uh the government or you want to say the reserve which is a private entity uh they just print money <laughs> so yeah. every time they print and money and it doesn't doesn't do us any good it just it's just so yeah so you just want to uh yeah, you want to get into the you want to get you want to invest somehow some way you want to invest yeah yes exactly beat inflation because if you just got that money sitting there that if you had a thousand dollars sitting there next year it ain't that thousand dollars ain't a thousand no more mm -hmm. it may count out to a thousand but it ain't buying a thousand dollars worth of product that it did last year right mm -hmm. so you got to be in the market you got to be getting returns mm -hmm. and like i said if you had that money in apple you got 39 percent almost 40 percent you're killing inflation so you got you're killing inflation and you got something to take home so yep so that's big because inflation is happening is real and it's it's not going to stop so um all right with that um et um wait yeah indexes etfs there's there's been a record um there's been a record amount of 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 um investments into ETFs this year which is which is big that's a big deal a lot of people are waking up to this and and they're in, they're investing their money smartly in ETFs you know in these in these um index funds and on uh, D time I don't know if you're in any but 
I was in a, in there with some of them. Um, so, you know, there, there's a. I'm not uh, yet. I, I'm not in the indexes, which is my next my next uh, round is definitely I'm going yeah. in. So, yeah, get in indexes, especially especially for for people who don't know much about stocks or anything. You don't know what individual company to pick. Going back to what Ian Dunlap said: two tech, two index, no stress. In the great words of Ian Dunlap, he'd be given a wealth of knowledge on Market Monday. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. Just just start with that. Two two indexes, B T I B O O and two tech companies, Apple, Microsoft. Get in, and you'll be good. That money is gonna work for you and that money is gonna beat inflation. Even in in um in down years, when if there's a recession or something, even if you're you're only earning five to ten percent, that's okay. Your money's still earning something and it's gonna beat out inflation. So a lot of people are waking up to that. That's why there's been a record amount of money put in the ET ETFs this year. So that's dope. Um, and lastly, Nike, they just uh, acquired a company called, I haven't looked up the company, RTFKT Studios. It's a collectible site for virtual merchandise, especially sneakers. So basically what we were talking about with the whole crypto, with the whole I NFT. see you, Tuffy boy. Appreciate the love. My bad, D. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, it's basically Nike is basically about to join the, the NFT virtual world with like Meta, right? I'm not sure if they're going into the actual Metaverse because there's several, several oh, worlds, Nike right? will definitely be in the Metaverse. That's that's why they, they, they bought this Well, company. there's several, there's different ones though. So are they going into Metaverse or are they going, because there's like, can, can out or there's some, there's like different worlds, mm -hmm. but they do the same thing. But okay. anyways... So yeah. they're doing the same thing to where you can basically buy digital sneakers, you know, the Jordans, the Nikes. And then what I was told is like, once you buy the digital, you'll, you'll get the, uh, you know, uh, a real, a real version too. So you'll have both, you'll have, you know, the same, same pair of sneakers and the yeah. digital and in the, yeah, in the real yeah, they'll, they'll be, they'll make those, the virtual sneakers. And it's going to be a possibility that you can have those, have those made in the real sneakers as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of why Nike is b bought this this company. You know, took them in because you know a lot of stuff is going virtual. So NFT kicks soon come. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, look out for that. Nike obviously is a good company too to get on with. Yeah, I mean basically, you know, what I'm saying like obviously you want to um you know do your research, but the the with the way I started was I did the kind of it's kind of an old saying, but it's the Warren Buffett me method to where, you know, if you're scared or, you know, nervous about joining, you know, putting your money into a stock, you join stocks, you know, or that you, that you use. So obviously, you know, if you rock Nike, you know what I'm saying? If you're buying Nikes, you know, all the time for your family or for yourself, then, you know, obviously Nike's still in business, right? So that means, you know, you can buy that stock, uh, your phone bill. If you're with Apple, you know, your Apple products, if you're with Verizon, T-Mobile, these are stocks that, you know, you can be with. Now, obviously, you want to, if you're, you know, trying to look into, you know, you want to do your research. That's kind of how I started. Like, you know, I have Verizon. I have Nike. I have Apple. Um, I have Uber, which I'm not even sure if that's a good one. I just, you know, I joined it just because, obviously, I use Uber. Like, I just used it today. Uh, so, it's just stuff that you use or stuff that you buy. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, you can be comfortable with, right? So that's kind of how I started. And then obviously, then, then I learned how to do the charts, which he was talking about earlier with the candlesticks, you know, the up and down, the resistance and support. Yeah. And, then, and then it's just doing your research on that specific company or, you know, trend or whatever it is, right? So that's kind of how I started. And I'm still learning, right? I'm still new to it. Still, not, I'm not even in the indexes yet, uh, just because I was focused on, you know, you know an, another route. But I'm definitely going to join and tap, tap into that. I'm definitely going to tap into the tech because obviously this, the world has turned into a tech world, right? So tech is going to be big. Energy is going to be big. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's kind of where, how I started. Yeah. So, yeah, start with something, you know, and indexes. Get in with indexes. Indexes, two tech, two index, no stress. Ian Dunlap, the great words. Um, yeah. And also, there's this book. Oh, what's it called? I got it upstairs. D time, you don't got it there, do you? The technical analysis book. Oh, by Fred McAllen. Fred McAllen. Let me see. I do. I mean, I have it stored somewhere. Let me get my book.